So, uh, thank you, Dr. John, sir, and uh, welcome everyone to the first CME of 2023 on uh, behalf of the Physicians Forum of India. And my proud privilege to uh, chair this session this evening. Thank you, Dr. Chauhan and the entire PFI. Uh, the topic for discussion today is uh, statins and uh, dyslipidemia and beyond. So, new molecules would obviously be put into perspective by our esteemed speaker. Things like mepidoic acid and the new, uh, the new kid on the block, the PCSK9 inhibitors. Uh, 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 it's my uh, privilege to uh, invite Dr. Vivek Kumar, who actually doesn't need any introduction. He has been spoken about and eulogized so many times out here uh, to uh, dwell on this topic. And uh, let, without further ado, let me invite Dr. Vivek Kumar to make his presentation. Well, so good evening, friends. At the outset, let me wish all of you a very, very happy New Year. Last year, me also, Dr. Chauhan and all of you declared that I have to begin the academic session and end it also. That's a huge task. <laughs> but in between, as I said, that I have to do a lot of feelings as well. So if you see, today we would start on a you know very important topic that the you know if you, if you know the RBRT disease spectrum. India is unfortunately the capital. If you see China and India, they are leading uh, nations who have got significant coronary artery disease. And unfortunately, in both the countries, people in their most productive age group, that is, you know, 30 years to 50 or 60 years, they are getting engulfed by this disease. And if you see that the coronary artery disease or as well as the cardiovascular disease has been made by uh, you know, our body structure in such a way that God probably did not want that anyone should live beyond 100 years. And that is why as the age advances, the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease is bound to happen. But when it happens in people who are less than 60 years or 65 years, then probably and definitely it is a lifestyle disorder. And the one culprit which has been found is the cholesterol. So, we always talk about the bad cholesterol and real cholesterol and there is a lot of intervention data which has shown that if you decrease the real cholesterol overall cardiovascular risk, even the risk for vascular event, stroke, myeloid infarction, the peripheral vascular disease, everything goes down. So, uh, <coughs> if we, you know, be very aggressive in lipid management, you know, beyond the lifestyle management, you know, modification, the good diet and all, then also probably we would need the uh, you know liquid lowering and in more so in acute coronary syndrome especially acute myeloid infarction because we are if you look at the data even if somebody get an acute heart attack or acute myeloid infarction or acute coronary syndrome in younger age then also they are at a risk of three to five times higher risk of having it again so we need to you know act fast we need to especially those who have had an acute car we need to be very very aggressive in lipid lowering and we have data from evopax and evax that the pcsk9 inhibitor added early after acute car <coughs> are safe produce 70 to 80 percent reduction in LDL cholesterol and other <coughs> lipid as early as four to seven days after an acute care syndrome. So meaning thereby that if you hit it hard, so if you look at the patients who come with acute heart attack, we give them loading dose of atorvastatin 80 milligram or atorvastatin 40 milligram and we have had CME on the same two you know, many years uh, back and multiple CMEs that we should load them with hydrostatin but still after that there is a residual risk of happening it again. So we need to be more aggressive and add PCSK9 inhibitor, especially in younger population. Because if you give this, then the risk of second myeloid infarction or acute coronary syndrome goes down significantly. And we will discuss further in course how much the benefit is there. So very aggressive and rapid, safe lipid lowering immediately after an acute coronary syndrome is the, you know, something where the PCSK9 inhibitor, one of the revolutionary molecule in decreasing the cardiovascular event is, is uh, 
there. So if you look at this data, uh, Dr. Samir Mehta, who is from Delhi, but is settled in the US, and he also presented this data that effect of routine early treatment with PCSK9 inhibitor in patients undergoing primary PCI or you know what we call primary angioplasty for ST segment elevation myeloid infarction, that is an acute heart attack. And that is a double blind randomized control trial was there and that you know, really show and we also had a data from you know our group in Max Hospital. We are going to be, you know, have got large experience with this also, the PCSK9 inhibitor. And this study uh, looked at primary outcome at six weeks, that percentage change in level of LDL cholesterol from baseline. And you know, the, the, the concept is already proven that if you decrease the LDL cholesterol significantly, then the overall event rates will go down uh, automatically. So, and that's the reason why the most of patients with that orvastatin 40 or 80 milligram or orvastatin 40 milligram are, you know, already loaded when they go for primary PCI or even in patients who are on medical management for uh, acute cardiac syndrome, they are, they are being used. If you look at the primary outcome, the LDL cholesterol reduction, and there are two graphs. If you see the sham control, that is, they were not on placebo, they were on highest possible dose of high intensity <coughs> statin therapy. And when you give them the allerophimab, that is PCSK9 inhibitor, you can see that they have significantly decreased LDL cholesterol. And within two to four weeks, you can see the difference is huge. So it means that you know, this is something which is really you know very very potent drug in our hand, and you need to give 150 milligrams subcutaneously once in two weeks. So meaning thereby that just one dose uh, in acute cardiac syndrome uh, would decrease the LDL cholesterol significantly. And in my experience, in Indian patient, it works even much more strongly, and the LDL cholesterol really goes down. Uh, and if another data that lipidomics of bioactive lipid in acute cardiac syndrome and you know this this also shows that in acute phase the LDL synthesis is increased after an initial increase in the plasma level so that is why conventionally when we wanted to know the LDL level or lipid profile we never used to send lipid profile in acute cardiac syndrome so LDL has a predisposition of oxidation exposure following acute cardiac syndrome and LDL particle size is smaller in patients with acute cardiac syndrome and that is why we call it type 1 LDL cholesterol which is more atherogenic and a small and dense LDL is more atherogenic and would cause more uh, quality event. The changes in peak size of LDL particles occurs in very early stage of infarction and a significant increase in size can be detectable 2 to 3 months after the acute event. So during first two to three months after ACS, LDL should be as low as possible due to more than to the nature because during the acute cortis syndrome, you have the you know, bad cholesterol that is LDL and the bad type of LDL cholesterol which is a small particles are more in circulation and that is the reason why they have got uh, syndrome and as I said that India and China are the capital of acute cardiac syndrome in the younger population. So this data developed my app initiated early in ACS is from China that is an NMR based study of 99 ACS patients in China. The PCSK9 inhibitor added to statin not only produced quantitative improvement but also the qualitative improvement in lipids meaning by these small LDL particles are decreased. This study, that is Fusion study, you can imagine this is again from China and this was a quality imaging study where the optic core and stomography and intravascular ultrasound <coughs> was used and it was compared with placebo with developing at 420 milligrams subcutaneous monthly. So you will you know, remember that there are two doses, 140 milligrams of uh, PCSK9 inhibitor that is Ripatha you have to give once in two weeks or you can give the higher dose that is 420 milligram of the path once in a month. So this would decrease the LDL level and uh, and then after that you need to do the, you know, they did the optic coherence tomography and intravascular ultrasound and what did it show that it was set up to determine the impact of the clock adding PCSK9 inhibitor on top of the statin and uh, that really shows, you can see here, that vertebral uh, can be stabilized after an acute cardiac syndrome. So there is 30% repeat event rates within a month 
if acute coronary syndrome is not controlled, if the patient has not been <coughs> revascularized, so that is why it is very, very important that we need to. So recently we had data from Pac-Man, parallel infarction study that was again a double blind placebo controlled randomized trial and this was not a very big trial but the message was really loud and clear that 300 patients were bi-weekly, you know, PCSK9 inhibitor and 50 milligrams were given in almost half of patients, nearly 150 patients, placebo was in 152 patients and uh, there again you can see the LDL cholesterol, there was significant reduction, so those who were in placebo arm, there was 85% reduction in LDL cholesterol and there was just 51% reduction in placebo arm who were on highest possible statin doses. The smaller studies are also there. They also showed that in hospital initiation of PCSK9 inhibitor and short term lipid profile alteration as well as in hospital mortality, readmission rates in patients with acute myeloid infarction. And this patient, uh, you know, this, this data uh, which was done from Jan 2016 and 2020, again, this is from. Uh, Chinese data. There again, the patients who were on PCSK9 inhibitor therapy, there was significant decrease in readmission. So, as I said, that in acute coronary syndrome, especially in younger patients, within three months there is repeated event rates, readmission rates, and in hospital mortality. So, these things were significantly lesser. Also, the this data from you know China showed that early initiation of PCSK9 inhibitor in acute coronary syndrome. Even after percutaneous intervention, there is added benefit that the you know significantly reduced LDL cholesterol level, and by virtue of doing that, there was a you know uh, the decrease event rates, the admissions, and also uh, there was no increased uh, you know side effect, and they this was really well tolerated. So, in if you look at the multivariate adjustment analysis, there also the coronary revascularization in you know, patients who were on <coughs> there. So if the patients are on medical management, then also the need for revascularization in acute coronary syndrome is significantly lesser compared to those who are on control group. And also the ischemic stroke death from any cause, they are significantly lesser with the, you know, uh, K9 inhibitor. Again, this International Heart Journal Advanced Publication this showed the study that in extremely high risk ACS patient with high level of LDL cholesterol, adding the PCSK9 inhibitor that is able to have the patient treatment relief as early as possible may enhance the lipid lowering in short term and improve cardiovascular prognosis in three months without increasing the incidence of adverse reactions. So we are also, uh, you know, trying to publish uh, our data from India that early initiation of PCSK9 inhibitor uh, is, is how beneficial patients in pre PCSK9 inhibitor have a lower incidence of MACE within nine, uh, you know, 90 days, that is three months. So three months readmission due to angina is also significantly lesser because the flap gets more stabilized. And how does the PCSK9 inhibitor, you know, would benefit? because it would reduce the platelet aggregation, T cell action is also, macrophage action is also, and also it reduces the endothelial cell, uh, reduced the activation is there, and smooth muscle cell, the oxidative stress is lesser, and also the, the patient would have the decreased T cell activation, so all the better things which you want, and indirectly, there is a decreased platelet aggregation, which also works. So let's look at the data. This data is from America, you know, from American Heart Institute 2022. That also says that alleviating the oxidation in the condition of atherosclerosis was seen with this molecule. And this data from, you know, PCSK9 inhibitor therapy that also says that, you know, all of us have become more familiar with the inflammatory markers. So what does the you know, VCSK9 inhibitor does is that it decreases most of the inflammatory markers that is <coughs> 6, 18 and EMF factors, all of which may contribute to the stability of the scrotic plant. And we have seen that in, during COVID time, in our practice, we saw that a lot of patients who have had a high interleukin and other inflammatory markers, they die or not, they have increased cardiovascular event. So again, this data from every primary enables rapid LDL reduction and inflammatory modulation. So probably it's a double-edged advancement, you know, advantage of this molecule that all the parameters of interleukins and the total cholesterol, LDL and 
for specifically Indian population, FOB and FOE, that also significantly goes down. So you can imagine that total cholesterol levels goes down. And this is the only molecule where more than 90% of the cases we achieve the target of 50% reduction in baseline cholesterol level. So transient upregulation of PCSK9 level following the ACS team, uh, the PCSK9 one of the acute phase reactant and potent inflammatory mediator. So I think any molecule which decreases the inflammation would decrease the adverse cardiovascular event, but definitely uh, you know, not the steroids because we have seen that steroid would increase the event rate. The PCSK9 peaks level rises up to 96 hours post ACS. So we need to give this inhibitor, you know, first within first 24 hours to have the maximum benefit of this, and that is what our practice is. So PCSK9 inhibitor increases the chronic, you know, and there is a PCSK9 increases the chronic plaque vulnerability. So if you give the PCSK9 inhibitor, the vulnerable plaque becomes much more stable, and the repeat repeat event rates will come down significantly. So, Evolusumab, you know, if you give it early in the acute cardiac syndrome, the inflammatory markers and all are much more higher, then the risk of cardiac events would go down. And even those patients who undergo revascularization, most likely by angioplasty or PCI, there also we have got data that pre-procedural treatment with loading dose of high intensity static, and when you combine it with the PCSK9 inhibitor, increase coronary blood flow and mitral perfusion after emergency thrombus aspiration in these patients with SP elevation mitral infarction. Even if the patient will get thrombolyzed, if you give them PCSK9 inhibitor, they would have a better outcome. This is again a smaller data from you know, nearly 300 patient data that again shows that you know contrast induced because when you do the angiogram, uh, the lot of patients would have contrast intervention, so the acute cardiac injury would be significantly, you know, the, the kidney injury would be significantly lesser with PCSK9. So the, the conclusion of this data was that use of PCSK9 inhibitor, hydration therapy, and static inhibition uh, would appear promising in preventing the contrast induced nephropathy, which is something uh, very, very important in this context. So to conclude, friends, I would say that. This is a revolutionary molecule not only for you know patients who have got familial hypercholesterolemia where we are not able to reach the target, but it is a magic bullet for patients who have got acute coronary syndrome and we want to decrease the event rates. And we know that new target for LDL is less than 50 mg per deciliter, so we need to decrease it. So if you see that with the conventional treatment of statin, we are not able to achieve the decrease in LDL to less than 50 mg per deciliter, more than you know 30 percent of the patients. But with PCSK9 inhibitor and statin combination, we can achieve it in nearly you know 80 to 90 percent of patients. So the ideal candidates for adding Vipatha are the patients who have got acute cardiac syndrome and those who are have, have got uh, you know high risk for uh, uh, the repeat. So definitely those who have got high risk for those who have got high inflammation marks and those who have got acute cardiac syndrome and more specifically ST elevation mitral infarction. So I'll conclude at that and uh, if there is any question we'll be more than happy to ask. Thank you Dr. As a prototype of the PCSK9 inhibitors, and we have a very clinical practice. Uh, in fact, uh, from this question, I mean, uh, what I wanted to ask was this regarding the new targets. So, do you see a role in the non HDL uh, cholesterol or as a target which is to be there? Yeah, so I think that's a very good question. So that's what we were focusing on. That is not only the LDL cholesterol, but with this, you would get a significant decrease in triglycerides. <laughs> B, which does not decrease with the static, any dose of static does not decrease. So, those patients who are genetically at a high risk of acute cardiac syndrome, they would, especially the Indian patients where the FO B has been a strong predictor of that, adverse cardiovascular event, definitely the risk of adverse event would also go up. It is talking about beyond LDL. Beyond LDL. Lovely. Uh, uh, the second question that I just I, I request Dr. John sir to be here to help me moderate the question answer. Thank you. Uh, uh, do you foresee uh, in the near future as the as a standard 
pre or immediate uh, post PCI uh, PCSK9 inhibitors to be given to blanket as every patient, especially since we see all these things happening pretty much in our younger Indian population and uh, which is the uh, case for concern. Yes, I think uh, in, in our practice. So one of the issues is that it's a still a molecule and the second thing is costly as the other complex molecules. We have got options of vapidoitis in combination with the fibrous So one thing which we I wanted to clear is that we know fibrate have time and again has shown that it decreases the cholesterol level decrease in fibrous but there is a zero percent decrease in cardiac events. Uh, in the renal fibrate. Bacidoic we have had uh, you know, uh, a month back, we had some preliminary data that it would have some decrease in cardiovascular treatment rate by decreasing the cholesterol, but it has to be seen as the, 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 uh, the status. Uh, but such a drastic decrease in uh, the total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, FOB, and the triglyceride level is only possible with this molecule. So only downside is that it's, it's an inflexible thing, but it, it's not that you need to inject it every day, it's once in a week or once in a month. So I think, and in Indian subset, you know, the, the, the outcomes are even better because with the first injection itself, there is almost, you know, a significant decrease in the cholesterol level. So the level becomes much more contained. So I must say that Anyone who has an acute cardiac syndrome, younger patients, whether you manage medically, whether you manage with, uh, with intervention or if you go for open heart surgery, bypass surgery, for all subsets, this is going to decrease the readmission rates and cardiac Two quick small questions. Uh, all the studies that you showed have been on a background of statin therapy. Yeah. So statins still remain and would continue to remain the baseline. So that's a good question. If you see that statin is something like a, a you know, COVID molecule which has, you know, so it will be unethical to do a trial without statin. So now coming to that, a lot of patients who will be statin in doctor. So it has got a place in patients uh, who are static in uh, but we need to have a very large pool of data to, to, to have uh, you know, significant high number of static in patients we need to pool that data and see what does this do. But whatever the data shows, it clearly shows that stand alone, this has got a potential to do, you know, do a cardiovascular protection. Uh, significantly better than what static does, uh, but as of now, you uh, know, we need to have more data. Now, unfortunately, it's a costly molecule, so the long term treatment is a significantly costly, it's an injectable molecule. So uh, we need to have real good funding to generate. It's a subcutaneous injection, and people have commented that the insulin injection. So in your plan at max which you did, they were on a monthly basis or a fortnightly basis? No, so we, we had uh, for how long did one fortnightly one year period. One fortnightly year. Yeah, one year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Johnson. Uh, it's a wonderful presentation and uh, I remember you had a presentation about a year ago on uh, this thing and then we had a uh, presentation even on web uh, with uh, Dr. Reddy's lab with Ankit. Uh, so my questions uh, uh, are basically related uh, to the success of the molecule. Being a champion cardiologist, in your opinion, what is the uh, issue with the molecule that it has not picked up to the extent that it should have picked up in la uh, ever since its launch, despite the very impressive data uh, on its results? Yeah, so if you look at the recent, uh, almost three, four days back, there was a long-term Fourier data against case. So all the data is very, very uh, you know, uh, effective and that shows that it is a molecule forward. The, the problem, as I said, is only with, I can tell you that there are a lot of reimbursement agencies and we had a you know, game issue with them that, uh, the, you know, why it was issued. So the larger part of the reimbursement uh, agencies, they are not still aware of this data. But if you ask me one reason why it has not picked up is the uh, 
Uh, sir, I also want to ask you now, uh, ever since the launch of uh, Ripatha, now uh, in, in, in last about six months we have had a lot of oral molecules and you mentioned them, peptidoic acids. I just wanted to ask you if we give high dose statin with uh, peptidoic acid in acute coronary syndrome, do they get even closer? to the uh, effects or advantages of uh, the PCSK inhibitors uh, in, in the trials that, that you mentioned. Can you just simplify it for the larger So, I think if you look at the, uh, you know, every, all other molecules put together, uh, the statin, the amphetoic acid and acetamide, all of them put together, is, you know, they will not match, they are not a match for BCSK9 inhibitor. Uh, and to the chemo, it decreases the LDL cholesterol, <coughs> the, you know, FOB, triglyceride, and also definitely they are no match. Uh, but again, uh, you know, we, we tolerate, tolerating the maximum possible dose of high dose statin itself is a question. So the answer, simple answer to your complex question is that they are not a match. Uh, and even if you give all to the main Indian companies who are trying, they already have the combination of the statin particularly now with the laboratory acid. And also some of the companies are planning to come with acid to provide. And to be honest, real world data is not yet produced. We don't have you know numbers that how much they can do and how much this will do. But uh, look at the total effectivity of this molecule. Uh, uh, we are looking at all possible combination of the equivalent genes for PCSK9. Sir, as I understood from your talk, as a carry on message for me as a physician, the younger the patient who gets ACS and since he has to have many years which will expose him to lipids, the lipid exposure rate, the lipid toxicity. It will be better for him if you can put him on PCSK inhibitors for as long as possible. Yeah, so I think uh, let me raise a caveat. I would say that you know, in my practice, what interestingly I have seen, I think is I was taught by my patient that he would cheat on my prescription. He would say that, you know, doctor, you have written for once in uh, two weeks, but I am getting it once and twice. So uh, I told him at his lipid profile level. The patient lives in, he is an Indian patient, but he is. Uh, of posting this in Cambodia. There is another patient who, is, who was my you know, medical college professor's son. He had an acute matter infarction. We had airlifted him from India. Uh, and uh, he is in Jakarta, in Indonesia. I have given them both of them in this case. And they said that you know, uh, because of the availability issues and all, they are using it once in six weeks. <laughs> one of them is using one thing to do one. So what they do is that they would do the lipid profile and the moment LDL level goes beyond 70, they would get it injected. And uh, the, you know, so the efficacy of this is for some reason though we do not have large data from Indian population, but I would say it works much more strongly in our patients and it decreases the LDL cholesterol, the other solid markers which are cooking in the in fact, during uh, the COVID second wave pandemic, I had a you know web uh, series uh, lecture with Dr. Devanya, who is from the US, and there he also emphasized that you know he sees in his patient group also that who are of Indian descent or South Asian descent, they are the PCSK9 inhibitor decreases the cholesterol level much more potently than the, the uh, complexion. So, um, we, I think uh, we have few patients who are intolerant to statin. Even 5 million or more statin, they are not able to tolerate. So, in those cases, they take uh, PCSK9 inhibitor and then do the lipid profile. And surprisingly, with one or two injections, it goes down significantly low as low as 40. Few patients who have the LDL cholesterol from 155 has gone down to 10 from the same lab, same lab, and then they wait for the LDL goes up maybe six months or so, maybe nine months, and then they get to 20 because they can't tolerate the statin at all. Sir, my uh, 
third class man. Related question is, let's forget ACS for time being. Lipids not only cause ACS, they also cause peripheral artery disease and they also cause strokes. Any studies on strokes and peripheral artery disease? So they have been not the, what we call it, these studies. They are not the primary end points. But definitely if you look at the secondary end points and the other added benefit that we know that it is the same vascular disease. So you are right that all these vascular events will go down significantly. So I agree that the history of strokes, so in our own experience, you know, there are a few patients who have got multiple vascular episodes. I've got one patient, uh, you know, who had had a low asymptomatic peripheral vascular disease and all, and he wanted to do medical management, uh, whatever it takes. And he says, can I do it? Can I do it? So I think uh, all the vascular events will go down significantly. So to me, it looks like that one giant is high in this graph. It showed that most of the guidance I was guiding data which showed that the plaque stabilization is there. So probably that is something which is very, very important. The plaque gets stabilized in the risk of the vascular events. So it's not say you call it, but I would say that the technical plan was to be very good. Dr. Sain had a question. Uh, I stand to be corrected on this, but to the best of my knowledge, I think Bepedog acid, the indication still are uh, after usage of maximal dose of statin and not used for ACS till now. Yeah, so the Bepedog acid is best in uh, patients who are intolerant to statin and those who cannot afford ACS can add inhibitor. So definitely, uh, the data of late which has come with Bepedog acid also is not as negative as it was with you know, it's a tumor marker, so apart from the COVID trial, no matter what else it did show, significant reduction, and even it did show some decrease in the cholesterol level. So I think still the molecule to move forward is easiest thing. Dr. Podar had a question. Dr. Podar had a question. My first question has been asked by Dr. Sen Gupta because why it cannot replace statin? Because of the drastic level to which LDL is decreased and at the rapid speed. So both are in favor of repatriation. Why we can't use in all patients of ACA injection is not the problem. The cost is also not the problem in ACA setup. So why we can't use in all the patients of ACA? No, so I think uh, uh, if you look at the, uh, because whenever the guidelines are made, uh, that has is that is made with the larger perspective where the, uh, because when you look at the NICE guideline, in UK, all the European guidelines, all, the European society, all these guidelines are made to, uh, with an eye on cost effectivity. So number needed to treat is very, very important. How many myeloid infarction and death? So myeloid infarction has gone down, but the number of deaths, how much decrease is there? So I think that is something where the cost effect, because the funding is done by the government. So they have got, so you need to prove it really. So it's not, the evidence is not on that level where it can replace the statin because statin has been there for almost you know, three decades and we, we have a lot of experience with that. So statin is something like, you know, uh, when you look at the acute call the syndrome, statin can be compared with aspirin. So aspirin, you know, we have got a lot of data with uh, Ticaglor and Prasugrel and all those PDP. still have data, we like data, trial and all, which has shown that is that the, the aspirin is not, no longer required. So similarly, in this space, probably we need to, you know, and the cost will come down only when the doses is small. I think uh, uh, we are not yet there, but uh, definitely very soon, uh, the larger doses will Till that time, those who can afford, you can use in all those places? Yeah, so the, if you look at the healthcare system, paradox, you know, in India, so we, we the other day had, I think, uh, is there. And so a couple of his guests came from Germany and they were really shocked to see that such a high level of medical health care like Max, uh, the patient can get treated within, you know, literally no waiting time. Absolutely. So that, that was, you know, they were perplexed to see. So we have got, so if you look at the Indian paradox, the best places are better than Manhattan. The worst places are worse than Ethiopia. <laughs>
My last question is how does it prevent the contrast in your nephropathy? So I think if, if you look at the contrast in this nephropathy, there is a lot of things to do with the, you know, the cholesterol embolization, the, 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 the total, anything which decreases the total cholesterol and inflammatory markers. So it's shown that interleukin also, when you give contrast, you induce some kind of inflammation. So when you decrease the inflammation by any molecule, the nephropathy or any inflammatory process related issues will come down. So probably by decreasing the inflammatory markers. Dr. Manish Gupta. Sir, um, excellent talk. Sir, uh, as a primary care physician, What's your take on looking beyond LDLs? You know, we see a family history, we see, you know, you know diabetics. Your take on LPA and HSCRP as a marker, even if LDL they have achieved targets, do we still, if there's a role of Ripatha beyond statins, if LDL is a target but LPA is high, there's family history and HSCRP. You, you, mean, to, you mean to say, like, is, is CRP a, a, a target? LPA, LPA as well. Is, is CRP a marker also? I target marker. Access, we are also okay. Yes, I think you are right on target. So we are looking at so if you look at the last week's uh, you know editorial in Jack by Dr. Bigley, where he showed that can majority of the breast be brought down by pacifying the plants so that you can pacification on plants. So it's, it's like like a wall can you can pacify it when you are okay with that. So, so you are right that if we can you know, decrease the CRP level, we can decrease the type of triglyceride and in, in bargain if you can decrease the total cholesterol and the inflammatory matter in the liquid six and also let me tell you our experience during COVID time also those patients who agreed and afforded BCSK9 inhibitor post myelin infarction, they are doing absolutely wonderful. Lovely. So I think yeah, that, that the, the, there is a role, but yeah. the problem is that we, this, this is, you know, at best, we can can see see an anecdote. We do not have large data yeah, in order yeah, to problem. produce large data, mm -hmm. but I think you are right. The intuition of decreasing the inflammatory markers will decrease the cardiac Dr. Tulsi, Dr. ML Kalra, sir, over to you. Your doctor had a question. Yes, sir, yeah, yeah. We'll come to that. Okay, okay. So, what a fascinating talk uh, once again, Dr. Vivekananda. So, the European uh, Heart Journal said a few months back that LDL goes raised to the bottom as low as you can get. Maybe less than 30 milligrams. What about single digit? What do you say, sir? Yeah, so I think uh, the slogan is lower the better. And the target is to go to a level which a newborn baby LDL cholesterol is. So that is 45. That is 40. Even less than that. So in fact, what Dr. Tulsi is saying that you know, so the, if you look at the larger band, you know, like I think the global data that is coming to 30. So that's what the new target is. But if we so the the mandate is that less than 50 is the so this was regarding the heart protection study, Dr. Viveka. So uh, no havoc intracranially, no cognitive declines, <coughs> no cancer risks seen. So every bit of data points that lower the better. This is the heart protection study, sir. I'm quoting that. Uh, I'm glad Dr. Manish Gupta <laughs> talked about uh, lipoprotein A, little a. So the Jack said this is an indi individual risk factor for ASCVD events and the four-year trial and the Odyssey trial as well involving large number of patients said lipoprotein little a increase CAD events and mortality. So this is a residual risk factor beyond the lowering of LDA. So you, uh, you yeah, know, so we definitely agree that these data, so lipoprotein little a is not little. It's a big yeah, way for our <laughs> population. So it's a big, big risk factor. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something which is not decreased by any other molecule, either statin, or the statin, or statin, obviously not with benefit, because it's not even with the 
you know, as a number of ideas. So definitely this is one molecule which targets that. And probably that is the reason, to my mind, that we, you know, whatever we have used in Indian population, and uh, we have really shown really good outcomes. I think both Dr. Mani and you are target that, you know, if we decrease these non-conventional risk factors, then the outcomes would be significantly better. Okay, sir. To proceed further, the future of lipid management, PCSK9 inhibitors, the latest baby is the Inclisiran, which decreases LDL by 60% and also decreases LP by 30%. The Orion study is going to be published in the near future and probably would throw more uh, light on the CV benefits uh, with this molecule. Now what is good about this molecule is that probably has to be given just twice a year. So adherence probably is a great uh, way forward with this molecule. What about, the, talking, what about, about the cost sir? Uh, it's around 58,000 right now. One injection? One, one pre-filled strength injection is costing 58,000. But remember it has about to be... About a in a year. Yeah. yeah, but remember it has to be given just twice a year. Uh, that's what it is. Six months. So about, lakh, about a lakh a year. Yeah. Sir, so your comment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sir, sir. So, <clears throat> That's a very good point and uh, we are going to be normal trial center, international trial, wow. Victoria wow. trial, which you know, we have included uh, today it's uh, two patients and our target is to include six patients. So that Victoria trial is where in Kinesaran, which is from, you know, you know what is, so there we are giving it, you know, you have to give twice a year. Has to have, uh, the initial dose probably you have to give uh, after three months yeah. and then yeah. twice per year. Twice a year. That's yeah. right. is, it, is it a PCSK inhibitor, sir? Yeah. 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 yeah, but so this is by, a, by a different mechanism. Different mechanism. For, for yeah. natural mortals, sir, mm -hmm. please explain what you are talking about. <laughs> so in this is considered to be, so we are, you know, with PCSK9, we are looking at decrease event rates, we are decreasing. With the inclusion, the primary objective of the trial is to reverse the plaque. Wow. So, you know, a lot of patients. So, not only plaque uh, stability, reversal of the reversal. plaque, so regression of the plaque. Regression of plaque. So, this is a CT corneal angiogram. So, we have got one of the you know, best CT angiogram machines in Max. So, there they are looking at the decrease in plaque burden. And the whole CD film goes to the core lab and there it will be analyzed. And the, there is, has to be a significant decrease in plaque volume. So first time we are looking at a very, very you know, objective way of decreasing. So it's a non-invasive study where we are looking at decrease in the plaque volume, plaque, you know, the, and, and also reduction in the total uh, diameter, luminal diameter stenosis from, you know, and it has to be something which is, which we manage clinically as a medical manager. So anyone who has got plaque between 40% to 70% on CT corneal angiogram and the FFR value non-invasively, if it is less than, you know, more than 0.8 means it is not significant, then we include those patients and those who have been on maximum tolerable dose of statin for one month. So 40 milligrams of statin, 18 milligrams of tolerable statin. And then we, you know, inject this molecule and then in six months. So that would be a game changer for, uh, you know, this is something like where we are talking about the plaque reversal. So I think that's a very good point Dr. KC has brought in. When Trisan is, you know, slated to be the game changer in Absolutely. molecules, you know, the, the, the plaque. So my, <coughs> my last two questions, Dr. Viveka. So, uh, do statins increase uh, lipoprotein A? <laughs> So they, yes, yes, go ahead, sir. So they are neutral to, to, to that, but I would say that definitely there would be some non statistical increase in platform A, but uh, definitely the total increase in event rates is not there. Absolutely. So not in all, but only exclusively in low molecular weight echo A phenotype, which statin probably increased to a little extent, clinically not significant. But uh, 
to further my this thing is, you know, uh, the lipoprotein A, see, if you have high levels, is associated with increased uh, aortic stenosis because of the inflammation and deposition of calcium. See, so probably uh, drugs like PCSK9 have a role here as well, not statin in that case. You know, aortic stenosis increases where the lipoprotein A increases. Yeah, so I think that's a very good point which you have brought in is that even the, you know, when you look at the aortic stenosis which is pure Sinai aortic stenosis or, you know, MAC which is the mitral annular calcification. So these degenerative valvular changes also comes down to when you use high dose lipid lowering therapy. And obviously the best in this class is PCSK9 inhibitor. So I think that would but that has not really been studied in last trial, so probably that's not an indication by PCC management. But definitely it is uh, you know, <laughs> something which. My, my last question, Dr. Veka, would be on the Samson study, which, uh, you know, the Journal of Clinical Epidemiology, just a few months back, June 2022, said that the statins intolerance is seen in about 5 to 30 percent of people. But, uh, you know, I believe these are nocebo effects as 90% of the people had, you know, this uh, myelias with placebo. So this uh, uh, Samson study was published in Jack and also in NADA. What do you say, sir? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, what we call pseudo intolerance, pseudo intolerance, uh, things have been going on. I mean, three days back there was a publication which showed that if you give you know, not coenzyme Q, but even giving them vitamin D supplements. So, they are also the doctrine, you know, the myelia is not. They go lesser in patients who are given vitamin D supplements than those who are not on that. So, I think this is something where in our clinical practice, if you reassure the patient, the static product is not more than, you know, 2 to 3 percent. Thank you, sir. Dr. Kanda, sir, uh, you need to wind up your questions in the next two minutes, sir. Two and a half minutes, sir. Two and a half, sir. sir. I give you yeah. three seconds. Yeah, second session. Sir, uh, firstly, uh, happy new year to all. Very good. And happy Boni to BFI. Because this Boni is very, 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 very lucky to us. Sir, uh, about the lowest level, he was talking about single digits, and then he may say decimal digits. Actually, local synthesis of uh, cholesterol is something different which we don't understand, we don't measure also. So there is no level which may be deleterious to our cell membranes. I think it is something beyond our reach. Uh, another, uh, my first question is about uh, lowering the LDL or increasing the HDL. Are they equal? So I think that's again a good question. So isn't it the increase in SDL by artificial method is by, you know, once upon a you know, time, around by uh, almost, you know, seven, eight years back, a lot of hype, like Dr. Kutsi made now about increase, and there was a hype that when we give it, this new molecule, so there was a trial called AIM high trial. So and they, and they so were they, hoping that with the AIM high trial data, the last one, yeah, last one. Will really increase the SDL <laughs> and they increase the SDL, but there was more decrease in cardiovascular even. So, by how the, the methods by which we increase the SDL, so only two, three methods have been shown to decrease the cardiovascular even. One is by exercise, second is by, you know, taking a lot of walnuts and almonds. <laughs> so, these <laughs> methods have been found, so, but taking niacin. Increasing the SDL did not translate into the high doses of omega 3 fatty acids. Very high doses. Sir, sir, just listen to me for half a minute. I want to inform the house. I, he gave a talk on anti aging. Beta HDL injectable is also a new modality which is, I think, parallel or maybe uh, comparative to this uh, uh, Ripatha and all that, which is to clear the vessels. It's an injectable treatment with HDL which is synthesized. It's not given by that niacin and all that. So it's a new upcoming thing. It may, it may change the game. Yeah, so I think it's still, it's not proven in large trials. No, no. It, it, it is in the pipeline and they have, they have proved in trials. So, 
Another uh, point uh, uh, what I wanted to say that uh, we have referred to a study which is uh, from China, had it been from uh, US or other, it was more dependable. So these days uh, uh, there are many reasons we don't depend on China's uh, uh, and doc documentation and data. Anyway, uh, I want your comment. Uh, are they dependable? Yes, I think. Uh, because China doesn't uh, re release data uh, to, to the other world. Uh, this is why there is a question. So it's, it's not only from China. I think if you look at the pieces, you look at the data now, a lot of data is from US as well, so Korea and Odyssey and all is not Chinese data. Korea and Odyssey, not Chinese data. Uh, last question, my last question. HDL, anti-aging is one thing and with age, does HDL change and can we do something for that? Yeah, so I think uh, to be honest, there is no last word written about it, but uh, definitely the HDL <coughs> So we need to, for the aging, we need to look for some yeah. other targets than the So you are looking for the mortality by yeah. Doctor, Doctor Achal Kanpur has a question. But please, uh, daily deployment and DL appearances, is it a soul? Is it is something helpful in this case? So if you look at the data from, uh, you know, ideal appearances, Still, it has not been really shown to have a really, you know, revolutionary outcome. So I would say that something still, uh, you know, not in the practice in regular yeah. So, just a very uh, last small question. I mean, you mentioned a patient who was totally resistant to taking statins and they have been given PCSK9 inhibitors. So, any kind of study that you have seen or uh, reported in which patient has been on PCSK9 inhibitors and subject to what Dr. Tulsi sir also mentioned, that there has been reversal of the plaque with Avilipumab. We don't have Avilipumab out here and Inclisiran is still on the way. So I was talking about the English Iran. Yeah. It's on the you know with with heavily man, whatever because he has put some patients on there. So whether he has seen any kind of regression or stabilization. Yeah, so this, this data will be uh, uh, so Orion study is going to be published in a few years. Yeah. So we don't have the data. It promises in any world, but, but uh, in human beings, we don't have data as yet. Uh, friends, I think uh, uh, I think we had a wonderful session chaired beautifully by Dr. Sehu. Beautifully by Dr. Vivekumar.